Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Cordell Johnston, representing the New Hampshire Musical Association in opposition to the bill. Um, I recognize the Glick decision, and I don't think there's any question any longer that a private party has a right to audio and video record police officers um, when they're uh, performing their duties in public. Um, but this goes way, way, way beyond the Glick decision. Um, under this bill, uh, and I, I guess the part that concerns me most <coughs> is at the bottom of page one, page one starting at line 27. All public servants shall be subject to audio recording, um, blah, 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 by any person while the public servant is performing a government function or any activity related to a government function. As Representative Martin uh, asked, would this apply to any city or town employee <coughs> once they punch in and they're on the clock? Answer, yes. Um, it would apply to any legislator um, when you're talking to any other legislator. Uh, this would allow someone to come into the governor's office and record her conversations of more concern to us. It would allow them to do the same thing in the mayor of Manchester or Ma Nashua or Dover, Dover's office. Um, there, there have been bills in the past that tried to codify the Glick decision, uh, which were, in our opinion, fairly reasonable. They, they made it clear that you could record someone in the performance of their public function as long as you did so, um, as long as the recording device was plainly visible so the person knew they were being recorded, as long as it was done um, either from private property or from public property that, that is uh, ordinarily open to the public, and as long as you don't interfere with the with the official performance of this public function. This doesn't have any of those limitations in there. Um, so there's, there's no protection from, the person doesn't have to know they're being recorded. Uh, so they could be recorded in their, in their office where the public ordinarily does not have access. And, uh, and the recording could interfere with their function. It goes, it goes way too far. Glick uh, is the law of the land. If people are violating it, uh, they're violating the law. Uh, if, the, if the legislature feels a need to codify the Glick decision, I think that's fine, but this doesn't do it. I'd be happy to try to answer your questions. Representative <coughs> Roberts. I've been in public office since my early 30s, and I can't recall any time uh, that I would be embarrassed or, or, or worried about being recorded. And the only thing I can think of is when you wouldn't want to be recorded is when you say something that uh, the public ought to know. Is there a question in there somewhere? Yeah, why, why would you be for this? Why would we be against this? You're a public person. Yep. And I, if I'm in the talking to one of my constituents, I well, you you may believe that, but I suspect that most public officials and public employees uh, would have an objection to having their telephone conversations recorded, having their office conversations recorded. If you don't have any objection to that, then you're for the bill. That's fine. Representative Pudi. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for taking my question. Would you believe this public servant also has several roles? I can speak about myself. I'm an uh, elected official. I have no problem in I'm representing myself as a state rep. But when I'm representing myself as a mother, I wouldn't want those conversations with my child. Is or, there a question yes. in there somewhere? So the different roles, so there is no privacy in terms of a public servant. How would a public know if I'm working as a public servant or my role is as a parent when I'm in a public space? 
That's a good question. I, I, I don't think, I mean, technically, I don't think the bill would allow someone to record you while you're talking <coughs> to your child, but that that would require them to know when to turn the tape recorder on and off. I, I think that, that just be a nightmare. I'm going to jump in here in just a second. Uh, like I asked the other other uh, witness before you on, on line four, it says at least one party consent. That eliminates the two party consent rule in the state of New Hampshire, which means as long as I want to record you, I can record you at any time doing anything at any place. Would you agree with that? Well, if you and I are having a conversation, you can you can record that and. I think that's less a concern for the municipal association, from our perspective, but that is a huge change to the wire that Thank you, Representative Burt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you uh, for your testimony. Uh, the New Hampshire AG's office is now going to investigate the voter fraud in New Hampshire because of Project Veritech, you know, James O'Keefe's group. Right. I'm assuming they didn't have the consent of those people in Portsmouth and Hanover that they recorded. Um, how do you feel on that? I'm not, I'm not that familiar with, uh, all I know about that is what I read briefly in the, I think it was in the Union Leader this morning. Um, if it's based on conversations between two, I should say the Municipal Association doesn't have a position on the issue of recording, uh, if you and I are having a conversation, whether whether I should be permitted to record that. And I think that's that's the kind of situation that you're talking about. Um, that's not really, I think that's a privacy issue for private citizens, and that's not our issue. Our, our issue is about recording of the government officials and the performance of their jobs. So, I, so I'm not sure that we have a concern about the issue you're talking about. In just one follow-up. Oh, thank you, sir. Um, well, these were elected officials at the ballot, you know, place in Portsmouth, Hanover, and I think there was one other, you know, that were showing people how to kind of skirt around the law. And, and, and because of this, and because of their taping, you know, do you disagree with their taping, you know, these people not knowing that they're being taped, but now the AG is looking into the voter fraud system. If it, if, if it was, if, it, if these were public officials yes. having a conversation with voters or purported voters at the polling place, which is a public place that, that the public has access to, I don't think we have a problem with that. Thank you. Thank you. I like that. Thank you. Martin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your testimony. And I've been thinking about this question uh, carefully in an effort uh, that when I ask it, I don't aggravate the chairman. <laughs> if don't there, there, there's, that, uh, yeah, there's that phenomenon, I don't know if it's a phenomenon of paparazzi, mm -hmm. who uh, basically stalk celebrities and it's, uh, you know, they, they refer to them as a stalkerizing now. In, uh, in New Hampshire, from time to time, there are these little feuds that go on in the town between uh, individual citizens and groups against the uh, public officials, the police, the fire department. Does this more or less open the door to that uh, someone talking, public official, under the guise of uh, the recognition of this bill? I don't know. Um, I think maybe you can already do that. I mean, as you. I don't know whether there, yeah, there is someone here from Keene, uh, but I, I know there has been an issue there with people following yeah. the, the uh, meter readers around, um, and the courts have basically said they have a right to do that. I, I think they already have a right to do that, um, but this goes, this goes well beyond that. This uh, allow, would allow you to record them uh, not in a public place or, or not in a place where the public ordinarily has access. This would, allow you to record them in their office or anywhere else, and, and that's our concern about it. Thank you. Cuomo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your testimony. You would agree that a public servant takes an oath? Yes. That's established. 
Is it not true that public servants are already responsible for everything they say and do? And if that's also a fact, why would you oppose that? I would think that if they decided and took an oath to be a public servant, <coughs> that they give up their right to be completely private, that everything they do is under that scrutiny. Would you believe that to be true? Uh, no. I, I believe that you may believe that, but I, I would not agree that everything that they do, I, I believe that public servants, whether it's legislators, uh, workers in a town office, school teachers, whatever, there are many, many, many situations where they have private conversations that, that they have a right to expect would not be uh, subject to public scrutiny. Follow up? Follow up. A public servant is being recorded for an example, in a tax office, they're performing a duty that they're supposed to perform. So if the interaction between the two people is being recorded, it's, that's reality. You're not changing anything. So I'm still confused why that would be opposed. I guess I'm not understanding the, the situation you're referring to. A, a public servant. Yeah. You're interacting with a tax official. You record that inter interaction. Yes. It's reality. So what is the fear of the recording? If you're just recording what's actually happening, I don't understand the opposition. I, I'm I'm not sure that I'm not sure that I can give an answer that would that would convince you. But again I'll reiterate that I believe there are many situations where where a public official or a public employee has a conversation that they have a legitimate expectation would not be subject to public scrutiny. It might be a conversation between two legislators on this committee. Uh, that there are innumerable situations where I think that would be the case. Can I have another follow-up? I would I'd just like to point out that we only have another seven minutes left in this hearing, and I have nine more people that want to speak. I'll, I'll pass. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Chris Casco. Thank you, Chair Call, members of the committee. For the record, my name is Chris Casco. I'm an attorney for the Department of Safety. I hold the position of Administrator of the Bureau of Hearings, appearing opposed to HB 1546. Our position is primarily based on the fact that we think this legislation is unnecessary in light of the Glick decision. The Glick decision always already says there's a First Amendment right to record a government official in a public place. Glick also says that the recording is subject to some time, place, and manner restrictions. This bill, we feel, is too broad in that it would have some unintended consequences. Just a little bit about history. There have been a few bills in recent years that have dealt with the subject of audio recording. Most recently that we've dealt with in two, 2014, House Bill 1550 allowed for audio recording. That bill also had some restrictions in it. That bill went to interim study and it was concluded to be not recommended for future legislation. So we think that supports not going forward on this bill, especially given the the rights that Glick already provides. And in 2010, there was House Bill 1501 that went before this committee that would have allowed audio, audio and video recording in a public building. There also was another piece of legislation that year in 2010, House Bill 1372. What the committee did in House Bill 1501 was to ITL because the study committee in House Bill 1372 was already going to look at the issue of the wiretapping statute and whether or not there needed to be any changes. That study committee also looked at the recording of a police officer in the course of their duties. And in the final report, the study committee recommended making some changes to the language in the wiretap law, changing definitions to make them more modern. However, the study committee report reflected that it did not support a broad authorization allowing recording of the police officers.
because that could compromise officer and public safety and that the committee did not want legislation that would result in a bill that may hinder an officer's ability to control a crime scene or to control a traffic stop. So the problem with HB 1546 being as broad as it is, there really couldn't be any restrictions, even if a restriction would compromise public safety. Another scenario that we have concerns with are some meetings that otherwise would be subject to a privilege, like attorney-client. Let's say in my job I have a meeting with our counsel at the Attorney General's office on how to deal with the case, and we have a conversation that's privileged under attorney-client privilege. This bill would allow for the audio recording of that meeting, and it would totally pierce that attorney-client privilege. It would take it away because we're government officials, both myself and the lawyer at the Attorney General's office would not have that privilege because it could be videotaped and then would be subject to disclosure. The same thing in the scenario of an EMS provider providing treatment to a patient. If they were a government provider, like a, a Concord ambulance, that could be audio recorded and cause a breach of the privilege <coughs> that that medical provider would have. Same thing at New Hampshire Hospital if a doctor is providing treatment to a patient because that doctor works for the state as a government official, that would not be protected. And the other problem with this is the government official would be subject to prosecution if they don't allow the videotaping. So they would have to have a very difficult choice. Do I violate doctor-patient privilege or do I violate this law and be subject to criminal prosecution? So for those reasons, we object to the bill and recommend that it be ITL. I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay. Representative Robertson, remember we only have like Can five minutes left in this hearing. I, what I don't understand is I'm talking to you 